The iPhone 16 is official and I want to talk about some of the more important things because the gap between the iPhone 16 model and the iPhone 16 Pro model is actually not that big of a gap anymore. They're actually more close to each other than ever before. And that's good news if you want to save some money. So let's go ahead and talk about it. To my surprise, the iPhone 16 had the biggest upgrade in terms of what it's got. Oh, no, it, it doesn't have the ProMotion display, unfortunately, okay? Type your comments and laugh at the iPhone 16. Go ahead, do it now, I'll give you guys some time. But the iPhone 16 does have two physical design differences, the first of which is the action button, which first debuted on the iPhone 15 Pro series, which lets you customize the button to do, well, basically whatever you want. And the second thing is something that's completely new, a cap capture button. Now this completely shocked me because I thought Apple was going to be Apple and just gatekeep all that new differences for the pro models, but no, the base model has it too. Now the capture button is kind of like a multi-function button that allows you to quickly launch the camera app as well as controlling the zoom and other camera features like the exposure, the portrait mode, so on and so forth. And the button itself has two stages, a full press and a slight press. This of course is also on the Pro models, but with the Pro models, you'll be able to use that capture button as a focus and exposure lock by slightly pressing down on it, and then once the phone focuses, you'll press down all the way to take the photo, you know, similar to a real camera. More so, the capture button is also like a tool for Apple intelligence. So the way Apple showcased it is pretty interesting. So you're walking up to a store, you pull out your iPhone and click and hold the capture button and the store name along with its ratings and you know all that info just pops up automatically on the screen. It can also be used to identify animals, plants, homework using chat GPT and well, whatever else. Now I know for a fact, this is something that my mother is going to use all the time because anytime she sees a plant, she's like, ooh, what plant is that? And then she opens up Google Lens, and then she has to go through all these different steps. But now, all she has to do is just press and hold one button, and it acts like a camera button, and also like this kind of AI button that helps you kind of identify literally whatever. I mean, that's pretty awesome. That, that's a huge time saver. Now, in terms of battery, all the iPhone 16 models have an upgraded battery, but strangely enough, the best battery in the iPhone isn't the Plus model anymore, it's the Pro Max. Not only that, Apple said the iPhone 16 Pro Max has the best battery in an iPhone ever, like out of any iPhone that's ever been released. And I find that hard to believe because you, you have any, like, do you guys remember how good, like great the battery on the iPhone 11 Pro Max was? I mean, oh my God, I was getting like nine to 10 hours of screen on time almost daily. But the iPhone 15 Pro Max, no, that's not the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The, the iPhone 15 Pro Max that I have barely gets me like six to seven hours of screen on time. So if the iPhone 16 Pro Max can top the battery of the iPhone 11 Pro Max, <laughs> I'm impressed. But of course, I'm not trusting Apple because it's marketing. I will test it out when I get the phone. So stay tuned for videos. Both the iPhone 16 and Pro models have Apple's second generation ceramic shield, which is apparently 50% tougher than a first generation. And Apple, buddy, you better be telling the truth because um, your boy is, is, is not happy. But it's really good, like I said, it's really great that Apple is not gatekeeping all of these new features to only the Pro models. So I, I'm happy that they're showing the base model some love, which is good because again, it, it saves you money just in case you don't really want the, the Pro models. Now, more proof of that is that the chip inside the iPhone 16 and iPhone 16 Pro are basically the same. Like you're only missing one GPU core if you're going for the iPhone 16 and not the 16 Pro. And what does that mean? Well, nothing, let's just be honest. The average person probably won't notice that you're only gonna really want that one extra GPU core for some of the more heavy intensive tasks. But for the average person using Snapchat and taking pictures of food, you're good, believe me. The ultra wide camera has also gotten a spec bump. It is now f2.2 instead of f2.4 like it was on the iPhone 15. This means 2.6 times better low light performance and now it has autofocus. So you'll get the ability to take super close macro photography. So really the two lenses on the iPhone 16, you know, they're kind of like having four lenses. Not really, but kind of. Because you have the 48 megapixel camera, the, the main camera, the wide camera. You also have the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. Then you have the 12 megapixel uh, two times zoom camera. And of course the macro camera. So that's kind of like having four cameras. 
Kinda. I mean, it's not really, but kinda. Now, because of that new design on the iPhone 16, well, I mean, you know, new, it kind of looks like the iPhone 10, let's be honest, but because of the camera layout, you'll now be able to take spatial videos and photos. In other words, 3D photos and videos, because Apple always has to have like a fancy name for everything. Now, the downside is that there's only really one way of actually looking back and watching that photo and video in 3D. And that is, of course, to buy the Apple Vision Pro, which is very, very cheap. I mean, literally anyone can afford this. Any single person uh, on Earth can afford this, you know, just as long as you like sell your leg or something. Like Apple, I, I know sales of the Apple Vision Pro have kind of went down a little bit. Uh, hey, maybe lower the price of the thing. Gee, I don't know. All iPhone 16 models also have upgraded microphones that use machine learning to help eliminate that like unwanted noise, such as like, you know, wind when talking to someone on the phone, as well as recording videos. Now, this is something that iPhone has always struggled with like all the time. So again, when I get my iPhone 16 Pro Max and iPhone 16 in, I will definitely do a comparison video against the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So again, if you guys do want to see those videos, hit that subscribe button and click that little bell next to the subscribe button so you know when that video does come out. Now, when it comes to feature specific things to the iPhone 16 Pro models is that now you can record in 4K 120, but not only that, you also can do that while recording in Dolby Vision HDR. That, that takes so much processing power, it's not even funny. And I think that's where that extra GPU core kind of comes in to help with that. Again, I don't know. I'm just totally guessing here. I might be wrong. In fact, I probably am wrong, but it sure does sound good, doesn't it? Now, apparently The Weeknd recorded his music video all on the iPhone 16 Pro being shot in 4K 120, and it does look good. But keep in mind, we're talking about actual producers and videographers with tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. So don't expect your video to look anywhere near as good as that video. Believe me, it won't, okay? J Hey, the truth hurts. One thing that impressed me is just how far Apple is going to really give us flexibility. So for example, if you're recording someone and then, you know, there's someone that's being loud off the frame and that just won't shut up, you can focus the sound to only have the person you're recording be heard. This is done after the fact, which blows my mind even more. In fact, you have different presets and each gives you a different result. This is huge. Like the fact that you can do this after you've already recorded your video that, that, that that's just that it, it doesn't even make sense how that's possible or maybe it's just too good to be true now this next piece of news is huge because if you guys don't want that huge 6.9 inch iphone 14 not, what the iphone 16 pro max you can now get the iphone 16 pro What's wrong with me? Why am I forgetting my numbers? Anyway, you can get the iPhone 16 Pro and not feel left out because you know the iPhone 16 Pro is 6.3 inches, new size, and the iPhone 16 Pro Max is 6.9. So if you don't want that 6.9 inch iPhone, you can get the 6.3 inch iPhone and not be left out at all because I believe for the first time ever, the, the Pro and the Pro Max are identical. Like the only thing that's different is obviously the screen size and the battery, but uh, as far as cameras go, as far as, well, literally anything else goes, they are 100% identical. This is great news because not everyone wants basically a seven inch iPhone in their pocket. Hey, is that an iPhone in your pocket or uh, are you just happy to see me? All iPhone 16 models now have upgraded cooling, thank God, but it's not a vapor chamber, yeah. Apple is using a graphite sheet, uh, but maybe the efficiency of the A18 and the A18 Pro will do its job just fine and your iPhone won't overheat as much. At least, I hope so. My iPhone 15 Pro Max like dims the display so much whenever I'm outside that I can't see anything that I'm looking at. The only thing I see is just a reflection of my sad, sad face. And that's a sight nobody wants to see. Now, when it comes to AI or Apple intelligence. There's a boatload of stuff to cover. Like you can make your own emoji because, you know, I think, I think that's how it always should be, you know, because what's the point of having all these emojis? Like this one, for example, when am I ever going to use this emoji? I won't. So why is it taking up space in that? Like it almost feels like an unlimited amount of like listing that you have to do just to find the one you're looking for. So why do that when you can just create your own emoji by using Apple intelligence? And then there you go. You can have a cowboy riding a, a dolphin or something. Is it weird that I'm more excited about making your own emojis like than anything else? Probably. 
But if you guys want to see like a full list of all the AI things that Apple has made, uh, go on Apple's website. They have a huge like page dedicated just to it and they go in depth and I definitely recommend it because there are some nice features there. Overall, this Apple event was pretty darn amazing for the base model iPhones because not only did they get the action button from last year, but they also got that, that capture button, the camera button, which, like I said, I could have sworn Apple was going to keep that for the pro iPhones. Not only that, but it got upgraded brightness. So now all the brightnesses across all iPhones are the exact same. They got that ceramic shield, all the AI features. You're not really missing out on any AI feature as far as I can tell. You got bigger batteries, more battery life. I mean, not bad at all, honestly. So what did you guys think about this Apple event? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know why down in the comments section down below. And like I said, like I said, I did order those iPhones. So if you guys want to see a bunch of comparisons, camera tests, video tests, so on and so forth, definitely subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, if you guys did enjoy today's video, click that like button and that's it. This was Mark from Mark's Tech. Adios.